Good morning. Uh, welcome to Silent Rock Church here in Madison Heights, Virginia. This is November 28th, 2021. And uh, before our Sunday school this morning, I should pray for Dr. Blanchard. She's not feeling well. And, but um, I'm Donna Cash, and I'm filling in today. And our lesson focus is today we're doing the international uh, Bible uh, scripture lessons. I pull from that. I really enjoy doing that. And I hope you'll enjoy the, the message uh, in um, get the lesson here. here. And we're oh, going to get us a microphone. Well, he showed me one back there, but I just said no. So here we go. <laughs> All right. Now wait for the microphone to come. Technical difficulty. Please hang in there. Thanks so much. But we appreciate all those streaming in and listening. And I uh, hope that you will enjoy this. As, as, thank you. As we uh, go through this uh, lesson this morning, uh, I have my disclaimer, which is going to be parts of the parts. And as many, many, involved, and many uh, things involved in this lesson, that we just don't have time for. <laughs> but we're going to go for it anyway. But um, today, so salvation is for all people. Share the good news. That's our word for today. Go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, dear Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one that's tuning in, those listening, and uh, watch over them and give them safety, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your kindness and all your blessings. Bless this word of it this morning to our growth. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, our lesson of focus is salvation is for all people. Share the good news. And we're in the Bible basis of is uh, Acts 10, 34 through 47. And I'm going to read that. I used to spit. Sorry, I don't have that. There we go. This is an easy-to-read version. <laughs> so in Book of Acts, we're talking about Peter speaks in the house of Cornelius. A little background of Peter is a Jew. And the Cornelius is a Roman centurion. And he's over me, at least 100 soldiers. And uh, so it's well known. But he uh, prays to the Lord. And he gives to the Jewish people. But they don't really get along. they got two different backgrounds. Cornelius is a, a Roman, if I believe that's right. Yes. And Peter is Jewish. And they both kind of race in different traditions. But Peter is a Christian. And he's seeing some things. There's some visions and stuff like that that the Lord has sent. And um, he's going to find out something. Because he is going to be sent by the Lord, Peter is, to go see Cornelius and give the good news. Peter speaks in the house of Cornelius. Verse 34, chapter 10, 347. Verse 34. Peter began to speak. I really understand now that God does not consider some people to be better than others. He accepts anyone who worships him and does what is right. It is not important what nation they come from. God has spoken to the people of Israel. He sent them the good news that peace has come through Jesus Christ, the Lord of all people. Verse 37. You know what has happened in all over Judea, it began in Galilee after John told the people they needed to be baptized. You know about Jesus from Nazareth. God made him the Messiah by giving him the Holy Spirit and power. Jesus went everywhere doing good for people. He healed those who were ruled by the devil, showing that God was with him. Verse 39. We saw all that Jesus did in Judah, Judea and in Jerusalem. But he was killed. They put him on a cross made of wood, but on the third day after his death, God raised him to life and let him be seen openly. Praise the Lord. 41. He was not seen by everyone, only by us, but the ones God had already chosen to be witnesses. We ate and drank with him after he was raised from death. Jesus told us to go and speak to the people. He told us to tell them that he is the one God chose to be the judge of all who are living and who have died. All who have died. 43. Everyone who believes in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. All the prophets agree that this is true. God shows that he accepts all people. That is so true. All people. 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came down on all those who were listening to his speech. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the Holy Spirit had been poured out as a gift also to people who were not Jews. 
So send them a little advice, okay? It's not about them. All right, that's how it's going here. But Peter's going to get his eyes open. 46 of Acts 10, uh, verse 46. They heard, him, they heard them speaking different languages and praising God. Then Peter said, how can anyone object to these people being baptized in water? They have received the Holy Spirit the same as we did. <laughs> so I thank the Lord for his word. And it's so true. Um, let me go back to the looking. But anyway, the, uh, you know, he's a Jewish person. God has sent him, uh, well, Cornelius has been praying, and God has sent, he sent some guys there to go get uh, Peter, bring him to Cornelius' house. And him and his whole household were there listening to what Peter had to say. But he was silent. That all people, and uh, this is a scripture talking about where me and my house will serve the Lord. That's what you hear that from. But here, I want to ask you a question. Uh, our memory verse, excuse me, is um, Acts 10, 34 and 35. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, uh, but accepts for, from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. So God loves us all no matter what. But if you acknowledge him as your Savior, you got a home in heaven forever, amen? Yeah. And, uh, so this is part of what was going on. The, the good news is that God is for all people, no matter what your background, no matter what you're going through, no matter what's going on. But um, we'll talk a little bit about, uh, in a recent Roundup article of the top 50 animated studios in the world, you see those cartoons, we call them, <laughs> as kids growing up with cartoons. Well, these are the new ones. This is all the new stuff. And it's, uh, of course, grandparents, it's like, what are these kids watching, you know? But it's, it's, it's what our children, all of them know how to use a cell phone or at least make uh, push buttons on it or a screen to find something. The kids know how to do that. That is their world. We didn't have that when I grew up. We did good. We had a calculator and a cassette recorder, okay? But uh, this anime or animation studios is everywhere in the world. Many of them were in Hollywood, as we know, as one might expect. Studios like Pixar, Disney and DreamWorks top the list. However, uh, some might be surprised to learn that more than half of the studios, that's 26 of 50 studios, more than half, were not in the United States at all. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? This is getting kind of global here. <laughs> Many were in Japan or Canada, other countries uh, active in computer animation include Germany, England, and the Philippines. Um, the Iceland, India and Turkey. Add to that the many of individual animators and artists from scores of other nations who work for those top studios, and you'll see that computer animation is now a radically international affair. And it really is. You know some of the movies you see, they're uh, Americans who we make here in America, they got them filmed in Iceland where it's really cold, <laughs> but it's cheaper to film there. So they sent all the crew over there to do the movies. But they're shown here in the United States. But that's just that part of the business. But it is, it's internationally, an international fair of the anime um, studios. Uh, these studios often have a surprising openness to international animators and artists. You should be fine, said one industry ins insider in an outline form, because most animation studio companies in the creative industry look, look mostly at portfolios. If you've got the skills, studios will be interested no matter where you're from. And that's so true. You know, those jobs, I don't care where you're from, you can do this work, you know, or have enough skill, where are you? <laughs> but uh, inclusion in the kingdom of God, our passage today shows that moment when Peter began, suddenly became aware that salvation of Jesus, of Jesus is intended for all people in all nations. He took fellow Jewish Christians with him to the home of Cornelius and the centurion. And all of them witnessed the Holy Spirit fallen upon these Gentiles as he had fallen on the Jewish believers. Through the vision and this dramatic event, Peter began to understand that God offers salvation to everyone in every nation, language, and tribe. And that is so true. Let me find the next page, y'all. Yeah. 
So he was like, you know, he denied Christ three times. And now he's going back telling people about Christ. And he's like, and it's just to them, to them, the Jews. It's all for us. You know, not the world, or we should be. But it's, you know, it's for them first. But God did a miraculous thing. He showed through Peter, and Peter started this too, going to the centurion, or the centurion called him over, sent some men, hey, come to our house. And he did, and he talked about the gospel. And that's just one thing of, of much going on here in this book, okay? It's a whole lot more going on. And it's wonderful. Take the time to read it and find out. And, um, but so, here he is, Peter's telling Cornelius, and they're listening, and this is how the Holy Spirit came upon the Gentiles. Because the Jewish people didn't like the Gentiles. Didn't like the Gentiles. Now, the gospel is for all. Because God said, it's for all. And Peter started that physically going up around. The Holy Spirit got, when he had left us on the mount, sent the Holy Spirit to us and to the Gentiles as Gentiles. It just began. And it went all over the world. And that's our our mission is to spread the good news of gospel, the gospel of good news of Jesus Christ. And that he died on the cross and rose the third day for each of us. We go to him and ask him for his forgiveness of our sins. He'll save us and we have life everlasting. As simple as that. It's not extreme. It's as simple as that. But back to what we were talking about a minute ago. Um, what's an animated film you have as a positive opinion of? Well, I'm a grandma. <laughs> I don't have them as a child but um, Pure Flex is a, you see that advertised all over YouTube and all over other places on the computer um, it's a Christian faith filled movies and they're wonderful they got that guy that, that played um, Hercules I think he's great he plays in a lot of these great movies they're wonderful these are Christian people they're trying to get the news out of the Lord alright VeggieTales most of us know that one we've got grandchildren they, I like Veggie Tales too. Those are great positive ones. I think one's called Owl Out or something, if I got that correct. And it's real positive and, and it's wonderful. But these are people from other countries that do this, that know the Lord. I think that's wonderful. They say, how do you respond to the idea that the world has become more of a global village? <laughs> it's still crazy out there, y'all. <laughs> Uh, response to be uh, praising the Lord and getting the word out. That's how I look at it. Someone in uh, Europe is getting God's word out just as much as here in the United States. And that's what it's all about right there. We're not in our own little corner. Don't know why we feel like that? Getting beat up by the world? But we need to pray and praise the Lord also for those that are out giving God's word, like Japan, Korea, all these different places. Um, what do you admire about Christians who be who come from other countries or cultures, the steadfastness in the Lord, to learn and to tell of God's redeeming grace. That's all it is to it, in a nutshell. But they're telling about the Lord and uh, sharing his good news, giving their testimony. And I say, we can't sometimes always share a lot. It's okay, because I'm sure Peter was a little shy. He denied Christ three times, right? And now he's going to Cornelius' house. That's a pretty big deal. <laughs> I'm going to a Gentile's house, you know. It's like somebody over here in the hood going over the other guy's hood, okay? Hanging out. Can't do it. <laughs> but it did. They had they came to him to talk about the Lord. And they came to know the Lord. They came to say we serve the Lord. God had given the Holy Spirit to all of us. And I'm thankful for that. And uh, that is pretty much the end of the lesson, y'all. But um, but God does, he shows us and he accepts all people, no matter what you're going through. And I know we're coming out of Thanksgiving and getting ready to go into Christmas. And I'm thankful for that. But it's a rough time. But when we lean on the Lord, he will get us through no matter what. He will send people your way to give you encouragement. He sends the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to give you that strength in your heart and mind. And you can make it no matter what. But um, I hope you uh, enjoy this. Please go and read the book of Acts. That's a lot in there. It's more than I can even speak. It's just so much. <laughs> but I um, ask you to keep Roger mentioned in your prayers and um, some others that's going through some rough times and health issues and traveling as well. There's a traveling this week back home, that type of thing. But I uh, appreciate you being here.
And I'm going to close up the Sunday school lesson at this time. God bless you. Go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word today, Heavenly Father, that you are with us no matter what, and that we can tell others about you, Heavenly Father. Give us the strength, the clarity, Lord Jesus, to tell others how much you love them. And we thank you for loving each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good luck. <laughs> I did not know how to do this.